Hey, you guys, <laughs> look what's happening now. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I know it's taken a, a, a bit of time to get logged on. Um, yeah, thank you, Restream, for doing something weird. But um, And thank all of you guys for hanging around. I know there are a couple, uh, couple of few of you, um, and we're already talking. We've been talking for a bit anyway. But thank you. This is a very important day. It's an important, uh, important subject. More sports cars in the world. And also um, a, a car that I have seen a ton of differing opinions on on the uh, the internet. <clears throat> and I want to know what you guys think. Um, it's been a while. It's a, the seventh generation of this Z thing. Uh, this Z has no number attached to it. That's kind of interesting. Um, you know, I guess it. you don't want to go back to three points and three liter again. So what do you do? You go back to the 300 ZX. I don't know. I mean, this is, these are marketing decisions that um, I uh, I don't have to make. So that makes me happy that I don't have to make them. But we can still argue about them and um, and see what we think uh, what they should have done. Of course. Um, anyway, so uh, without further ado, I want to bring on our uh, our guest today, and uh, hopefully she will be a guest uh, often in the future. Um, that is the drives deputy editor, Kristen Lee. Kristen, fancy. Hi. What's up? How are you? Good, good, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm like jazz on this Z stuff. It's Z day. Z day. It is Z day. Well, it is literally. Well, last night was literally Z day. Yeah, last you night. Went, but yeah, you went to see jewel. it. I did. Residual. I did. It yeah. was really cool. They really nailed it in person. It has presence. It photographs really well. It's good. Good stuff. Yeah. See, I think that's that's going to be one of those things that this car, um, this car is going to get people kind of angry at it a bit on the internet, and then when they see it live, they're either going to like it more or maybe hate it more. Or what do you think? I feel like the thing that people are getting mad most about is that it shares a lot of parts with the 370. Yeah. To which I would say, why is that a problem? The 370 was good and they didn't make it any worse it's the same so i see that as a net win actually i mean i you know i guess that that's one of those things where you can get you could be like mad at them for not pushing the technology forward a little more but you know what they're not really in the position to do that and the fact that they're they actually did this um in a in a way that was cost effective and i hate to be like thinking like a suit but i do that a lot now <laughs> So I, I can totally get, you know, why they would um, do this incrementally and not build a new platform for it, which would have cost more. And then they would have had higher, um, higher volume projections. And that would have be unattainable, basically, because who knows what this thing is going to sell. I think it's going to sell fairly well. Um, and it's I mean, obviously, like the 370Z uh, hasn't been setting the world on fire in the last few years. I've actually been kind of noodling on this theory um, because, you know, Patrick George just drove the new 86. I just got back from driving the Black Wings and now, you know, this thing drops and it kind of makes me wonder what pushing the envelope of technology for enthusiast cars looks like. And I don't think anybody has the answer, which is why all these cars are sticking with the same formula, which is rear drive, front engine, manual transmission, because they know that works and they know it's good. And it seems like automakers have collectively decided that pushing the envelope of technology means electrification mm -hmm. and making things heavier and semi-autonomous function, all of which enthusiasts do not want. So at the risk of giving them something that they also don't want, let's just give us something that we've proven that we want. And we, right. you know, they just listen to the peanut gallery and they're like, okay, so they want the Z that looks like a Z. They don't want any electrification. They want manual, they want rear drive. And the engine, okay, let's make it turbocharged because we can get some more power out of it, ship it. And that's what they did. And, you know, it kind of lit at least our Slack on fire last night. It did. Uh, <laughs> people are really excited. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I mean, all right. So, so take a look at the, at the, the screen. I mean, like it's, here it is. There's that weird front that everybody's talking about the, the rectangular angular uh, mouth. Perfect for an intercooler, I suppose. Um, and then the like kind of sleepy eyes, which are great for aerodynamics and um, and their LEDs and stuff. So, I mean, they're modern and all of that uh, has it means low frontal area. So so 
pretty s slippery through the air. And then also another front end consideration that they have is uh, pedestrian safety, right? So they, they have to have 20 millimeters. This is the other crazy like thing that we never think about is that there's 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 low frontal area and then there has to be 20 millimeters between the top of the engine and the inside of the hood so that if it if you get hit by it, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in the street anyway? If you get hit by it, it's for cars. Yeah, right. Well, there's like more, uh, like a more damping, so you don't like you, you're less likely to get a you know a, a head injury because you're not slamming up against the engine. That's just one of those things. So like you start to to see where they they you know kind of had to make those compromises, and you go, yeah, 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 okay, maybe I've seen too much. The other thing with the front, uh, while we're on this topic, <clears throat> is. On the Z Proto, it was all black. And on this, they kind of have that gunmetal gray detailing on the top half. And the bottom half is where the radar for all of the driver assist uh, functions live. So that's what that, that kind of square thing in the middle is. All cars yeah. have it now. It's just yeah. a matter of being creative about where you hide it, I guess. Um, right. But it does come standard with like forward uh, collision alert and cruise control. So that's nice. Welcome to 2021. We have <laughs> some pretty standard... <laughs> driver is this tech yeah yeah well okay so now i just want to say so we'll talk about we, there's so much stuff to talk about with this thing but i just want to i this so the to be you know fair to the designers i'm you know i'm not really a design critic but i want to say the hero angle became apparent pretty quickly oh right? it's the butt shot yeah it's the, it's butt the shot. it's the ass that's the sure. hero angle no it doubt is. no doubt I mean, they use the retro tail lights there. It's nice, clean, almost like a heck blend design. But is that how you say that? Heck, heck blend. Heck, heck blend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I usually don't like looking at the rears of cars in my own photography. When I look back at the pictures I've taken, mostly I take pictures of fronts. But if mm -hmm. I get to drive this car, I will naturally gravitate towards the back. And I think it's a huge improvement over the 370. The 370 always weirded me out with its kind of lumpy taillights and headlights and i thought the 350 was way cleaner with kind of the blade looking taillights and this they just really really leaned into the horizontally opposed uh oriented yeah. design it kind of makes the the rear look wider yeah for it. well you know you're right i mean i think that the, the one the thing that they resolved in this design is the tapered look right where it looked it, the, the 370 more so than the 350 was very chunky. It had a, a lot of material in the rear, right? So it gave gave it this sort of bustle back kind of look. Um, where in this one, they really, re really resolved it. I mean, like, I, I just can't stop looking at that part of it. It's just, it the taper is perfect. The haunches are sort of perfect. Whatever, you, you know, like the, the sort of like metal muscularity of it is, is kind of perfect. I, I think I, uh, yeah, I think I'm having a moment. Yeah, and then you kind of just... Put the cherry on top with that little ducktail spoiler, mm. optional, uh, and it just really finishes off that line real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it, turn it to the side, and you do get a little bit more of the the previous model. Mm. Um, but you know, uh, short overhangs mostly. Yeah, yeah. They really push the wheels all the way out there. It's great. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good look. Um, okay, I'm in. What, uh, let, me, let me see. What do you guys what do you guys think? Um, so you guys are already bringing up a bunch of option uh, topics that I really do want to cover because they the, there are there are two trim levels, mm. sport and and uh, and performance. And the there's but there's not basically it's content. It's not like the, the two things are very different. It's just a matter. It's just sort of a content package. Right. There's also that, uh, I think the Proto Launch Edition or something. I forget exactly yes. what its name is. It's that yellow one with the bronze wheels and they're only making 240 of them and so on and so forth. You know, this was a, it was a PR flack last night saying this. Yeah. And he said, oh, I think this is going to be, you know, one of the most valuable Zs come a few decades from now. And I was like, you're being paid to say this, but also <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. Well, it, first of all, you're, he's probably right about this. I mean, it's going to be one of the few naturally, well, no, sorry, not naturally aspirated. It's going to be one of the few ma uh, manual sports cars kind of left, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, in 20 years, how many, I don't know, we'll see what happens, but they're only making 240 of these. And I, I like the yellow with the gold wheels 
but I don't love it. <laughs> I, don't I know think the it. blue is better. I think blue yeah. and bronze wheels has always been the combination. I'll take red too. It's a consolation yeah. prize, but it should have been the blue. I, you know, they made the the Z Pro that yellow. It's fine. It's not my favorite shade of yellow. I kind of like a more a warmer Honda Civic type yellow. This is mm. a cooler yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean that it's and the next to the blue, it really looks sort of very primary colory. But um, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I'll sort of. How does it look in person? That's you know different than it looks here. It looks it looks like that. Um, yeah. It's one of those paint colors that I think sort of takes on the temperature of the light around it. So under the studio lights, which were very, very cool and kind of purplish, it looked like a cooler yellow. But I suspect, I haven't seen this car in daylight. I suspect in daylight it will be also very striking. Oh, I didn't notice that the uh, the taillights are kind of encased in that clear, um, I don't even know what you would call it. They're, they're encased in a clear plastic um, <laughs> fish tank. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, exactly. It, they look... They, it doesn't look like a monolithic piece of plastic, but it no. sort of is, right? Yes. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, makes it easier to fix, I suppose. I hope maybe it won't be fogged up as easy. Yeah. When yeah. moisture gets in, I don't know. I don't know. I, <laughs> I just I don't love the front grill. It's just the rest of the car is so angular and curvy. The headlights are curvy, and then they're like rectangle grill. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It was a bold choice to make cause the rest of the car. I so here's where this is what I'm. You know, my like armchair design. You know, bullshit is. I I honestly think that they did it because they were concerned about how um, sort of soft looking everything else was around there, and that they added this really angular piece to set off all the sort of soft stuff that they had to do to um you know to get frontal area down to get aerodynamics right and also to get the pedestrian stuff uh done hey what happened mm -hmm. where did i go did the video where did you oh did he leave <laughs> nope i'm still here <laughs> um yeah i mean i don't i don't exactly know i think you know what probably happened so i should probably start every video by saying hey um when my when my camera battery overheats, um, I'm going to just talk and I'll just run a like a, a video thing. It's OK. So You've got such a nice radio voice. I Well, you know, I, I, I've been working on that many years <laughs> um, anyway. So I but I do want to start talking with my if my camera will cooperate. I do want to talk about some of the technical stuff. Um, you know, the engine is an interest. Am I back? Look at that. I'm back. Um, the engine, the engine uh, is. So have you driven the uh, the Infiniti Q60? No, but um, our staff writer, Peter Holdereth, has, and he swears by this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 400 horsepower, which makes it, you know, obviously the most po the most powerful Z um, that has ever been. This is also now in the V uh, the VR uh, engine family, which which makes it closer to the GTR, I suppose, yes. um, architecturally. Yes. Um, twin turbos, two small turbos. Um Square, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a square bore and stroke. So eighty, I think it's eighty six by eighty six millimeter. Um, let me see. What else? What else is important about that? Um, three hundred fifty pounds feet, mm -hmm. uh, like turbocharged uh, linear torque curve. So from sixteen hundred to fifty six hundred. So not a screamer of an engine, but but. Um, I think it's going to be a hustler of an engine, not a screamer. Yeah, good point. Yeah, that's a good way to put it because it is what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, engine cutoff is 6,800. Yeah, right? okay, yeah. It's definitely not. It's no Porsche is right. what we're getting at here. There's no sky reaching red line. It's just going to be meaty down low and then you got to shift. Right, right, right. Um so, yeah, I mean, I think, um, yeah, that was one thing that Peter did say about that engine is that he wished that it had a manual attached to it so that, you know, because it 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 revved enough to make it something that you wanted to shift, like unlike some turbo cars that mm -hmm. that um, that have just a giant a fat torque or uh, fat torque peak. But it, it's a car that he wished he had a manual and now it's in a on a platform that's uh, it's got a manual. Yes. And um 
I also believe, I don't know where the transmission is being sourced from. I do believe the steering rack, the electric steering rack, first time um, mm. for see. Yes. I believe that is sourced from a Q60. Uh, obviously, they've oh. done some work to it. Uh, well, I hope they did. I <laughs> yeah. hope, oh God. So, so that, that brings up an, an interesting point and then that a lot of people are sort of angry about and sort of hoping that they don't do is that, and I, and I, you know, I should remember what it's called, but it's that active steering that, uh, that infinity does. That is really, um, I'm going to say, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it, first of all, it's not great, but also it's, I feel like it's a technology that hasn't been fully baked quite yet. And they, I don't know. I mean, it's just a, there are a lot of calibrations that aren't good and it feels like garbage. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So, yeah. so, but they, they did, you know, say specifically in the press release that the steering on this has a very mechanical feel. Uh, it's rack mounted. It's, you know, it's, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see. I, mean, I know. Like I can also BBS. say words that are untrue. Like I'm blonde <laughs> and I'm a man. Like the, we can just say things. <laughs> you so say until, things. until we get behind the wheel, I, I, right. uh, I'm, I'm, wor I'm chasing down the story for the drive.com, which you should all read when it publishes eventually, I hope where I'm, I'm literally being like, show me, show these questions to an engineer. Tell me exactly what you did to make yes. it different than the Q60, because if you just took it from the Q60 and you put it in here, you're going to piss off a lot of people. Right. Right. They are absolutely going to piss off a lot of people. And um, they've you know, it's funny because like they've they've already made it a very cost effective development that why wouldn't they just tune it really, really, really well. Right. They're already saving money by repurposing the platform. Mm -hmm. um, why not just. Yeah. I mean, so so I don't see why it would it, it would be something that they wouldn't uh, at least try to get. Um, every bit of the performance equation, right? Yeah, like milk it. <laughs> you can. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, so we'll see. I guess we'll see with the EPS. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, just, just. Oh, oh. So, so what's interesting is like the um, the first thing you notice in the on uh, the thing where they're talking about the manual uh, is it is they've branded the exit their partnership with it has an exity e clutch, right? Yes. Which to me says. Well, Exidy makes OE parts, right? I mean, like, what is it just that, like, one of those things where, like, you go to Olive Garden and they have, you know, like Bert Bertolo or olive oil or something? Like, it's like, and it's uh, Bertoli and it's on the menu. It's like, oh, Bertoli with an R, you know, like, it's the trademark. And they made, you know, they made a deal and money changed hands. Yeah, of course. I don't know. I think that's, I think all of those JDM parts, like the raised wheels also, yeah. I think those are just, to show the enthusiasts that it has the parts that right. they would also be shopping for, I guess. But if I may tangent a little bit, the thing I'm actually most excited about, I'm most excited to see the tunes that people are going to do to this thing immediately because right. people have been tuning that VR engine for a long time. People tune the Q60, so on and so forth. So there's an established ecosystem of tunes, parts, everything. Yeah. for this car people are ready for it. this is not like uncharted territory right so i promise you the day this thing gets sold the next day it will make like 500 wheel horsepower or something do you know that's a really good point because i think that's where toyota and and bmw missed the boat a little bit because i mean yeah you're starting to see people tune the supra but you know it's like i i think it's where hyundai missed the boat with the with oh, the original genesis the genesis you know what so I mean? So like, bad. That right. could have been a tu like the tuner car, and and it, and it wasn't. And it wasn't. They weren't. They just didn't spend enough time, you know, interfacing with uh, with the tuner. Like you know, like when you when you put out a car where you really want a lot of aftermarket support, you take it to SEMA, you do the measuring. Like they have, like they make a big deal about getting all the aftermarket guys the information they need to build parts for it. Where, where and the thing about the 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 genesis coupe was that like we knew it had an engine that was related enough to the what was it the mitsubishi um uh the twin cam mitsubishi g but oh, I, God, I, I, I this remember. is so that so long ago it was so long ago <laughs> but it was so close to that engine that everybody thought that like they were going to be able to use like evo tunes on the uh on the um on the genesis and it just didn't and and i feel like without that um without the aftermarket and the tuner scene to drive it on. And again, like the tuner scene, isn't like it was 
15 years ago, but it's yeah. pr still pretty, it's you know, still there, pretty there. Yeah. But it, well, without that, you sort of, you sort of lose the, you know, that core audience for that car. And then it, and then, the, you know, cause they do the, a lot of the marketing for you, you know, when you, yeah. when you help them out. Um, hopefully this will be that car. The other thing is I can't wait to see Chris Forsberg roll up to this at next season's formula <laughs> drift right. sticker, wide body angle kit, thousand horsepower probably from, from this engine or some variant of it. I yeah. can't wait. And that's that. I think that's basically the audience of this car. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So it's just, I think the video ended, maybe I'll roll that again just so we, we see it. But like, um, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Just one last thing about the exity clutch thing. Like if they're, if they're doing like a stage one clutch that feels a, that has a lot more feel, but it doesn't, you know, like an, an OE clutch, they do a lot to damp out the, um, you know, the resonances and the, and the friction and all that stuff so that it feels like you're driving a normal car. Like if it does have like a stage one clutch in it, it would be kind of neat. Like it's already got like, part part the way there on a uh, on a tuned uh a, a tuned drivetrain so it would be kind of neat anyway i um, i depressed the clutch last night while i was in it i couldn't turn the car on it was heavy but the thing is it was off so i don't know if the car is on if there's going to be any sort of aid or assistance that will make it lighter yeah but with the car off it was heavy and i was encouraged by that yeah Right, exactly. Um, so actually, let me sorry, let me let me roll this again because I feel like there's there's still oh I, we did I did we, there's a little music here. Let me turn that <laughs> on. It's very uh, um. Anyway, so uh, okay, so more more about the 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 stuff that they've announced, right? So they've announced that there'll be two uh, two trim packages, as we said, sport and and uh, performance performance comes with limited slip and better brakes and bigger wheels and lighter raise wheels and what else um a few other things whereas like the base model which is you know it's kind of weird i mean it's pretty decontented but it does have 18 inch wheels like it doesn't have like i sort of would want it with 18s like i don't know if i want it with anything bigger than that but um, it, but that's what it, it's pretty decontented, right? It's got, you know, it doesn't have a limited slip. It, um, has the same motor, right? Same, same amount of power. Yeah. The hardware is essentially the same. I guess you, if you want to do donuts out of the showroom, you need that LSD. Uh, yeah. I don't do that. And also I like saving money. So the base would be fine for me. <laughs> 400 horsepower. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it is it is plenty. Um if you're on the, if you're going to be going to the track though, which I know that you you've been going to the track more, so I don't know. I mean, are you are you, I mean you do you feel like would you would you buy this and then bring it straight to the track or would be you like, nah, we'll just, you know, get something else. Ah, uh, it's hard for me to say cuz I haven't driven it. Right, I know. And it I, just, I think I would. I, yeah. Like sure, right. but yeah. I personally I think the GR86 seems more fun at the track for someone like me. I need a slow car, not a fast car. GR86. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we should probably do like a, a whole, we'll, we'll get all the old, the old gang that, that drove the original. Um, actually, Camisa did a pretty good rundown of the, I mean, just to promote somebody else's stuff. But like, I mean, I, I watched, no, I mean, you know, Camisa is a, you know, sort of an old, uh, a, a, an old bud from the days from, from the back in the day. Anyway, but like, I mean, watch his video. He did a really good uh, rundown of the, AE, uh, the AE86, the, Toyota 86. What year is it? I don't know. I don't know what year it is. I mean, I can't believe we're talking about this. Um, anyway, so money wise, um, let me see. 40 grand to 40 grand base. For uh that is the rumor right now. Mm. It has not been confirmed by Nissan, but then Nissan PR went into I think Andrew Collins mentions and said it. Yeah, that was weird, right? So Andrew Collins from Car Bibles went in uh, uh yeah, yeah, one of the PR guys went in and uh, so is it's is that confirmed? I so, mm, look, yes. it, it, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that it would be. But what's interesting is if like if you look at forty grand now, uh, and you go back to nineteen ninety, that would have been like twenty grand. Twenty grand, like you weren't getting yourself 
uh, a 300 ZX for 20 grand in 1990, right? It was, you were paying 30. I mean, I'm Plus, probably I mean, your lead. I wasn't born yet. Yeah, that's right. Damn you. <laughs> Sorry. Damn you for being so damn young. Um, yeah. So, so right. So 30 grand got you the base, I think the, yeah, the 30 grand got you the base, uh, 300 ZX. And then you were into, I mean, God, so that would be like an $80,000 car now. Now, okay. It, has it increased commensurately with, uh, with the performance or has performance increased commensurately to that? I don't think so, but this, that makes this kind of still a, still a bargain. I guess. I don't think any cars are bargains right now. It's very difficult for me to car call any car a bargain. Yeah. Adam, uh, Adam, you are right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, car and driver, Adam uh, Badillo says, car and driver said this car costs the same as the 300 ZX when you adjust for inflation. Um, I think they're, I mean, I, 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 I did the calculation, but I don't think they're exactly right. They're closer to, it's actually less than the base model. So not even the twin turbo. So the tur twin turbo would have been, you know, 48 then. And now that would be what? Like coming I mean, probably close to 80. So oh, God. anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm going to dispute car and driver on that, but that's just a, that's semantical crap. I mean, I think uh, ultimately it does mean that this is a bit of a bargain. What do I you think? think they priced it competitively because this morning I went on to check how much the V8 Mustang costs and the V8 Mustang costs $40,000. Right. And that's yeah. a, that's an interesting comparison, right? You got your naturally aspirated engine, but also six speed manual. It's, it's democratic power. These two cars. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, really, that's one of the things that a lot of people are saying is like, why would you why would you not? Why would you get this? I mean, I, I have some idea why you would get this and not a Camaro, you know, which arguably like in the hands of a Randy Popes, you know, can, you know, an SS is going to do uh, some serious damage, um, you know, or a, or a Mustang for 40 grand. I mean, you get a lot of Mustang for 40 grand. Yeah, I mean. You know this. Uh, I am a trashy Mustang woman. I love yes. Mustangs. Yes, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that's it's getting close. I don't yeah. know. I'd have to think about that one. I know. I know. It's so true. I mean, I, I to be honest, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, 40K, I don't think I've ever spent 40 grand for a car. I mean, like, because I'm a cheap bastard and because I don't want a, for, a, an 84-month loan. But, um you're absolutely right. The SS1 LE, Sean, uh, punches above its weight in terms of performance on track. In fact, I think that was the one where uh, I think I think Randy Pope's crushed. I, I feel like it was I forgot which car he crushed it was in a, a pretty important car. I think it was might have been a, uh, um, I think it was maybe a Ferrari. That couldn't have been a Ferrari. I don't I don't remember. Anyway, if anybody I remember that remembers, car being impressive, know. but it was very, very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when allowed, GM builds good cars. Yeah, but then you get people saying, well, you know, the Camaro, you can't see out of it and blah, 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 whatever. I don't know. Um, question is, is this just a better 370Z? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's incremental. Yeah, it's an yeah. incremental build, right? I mean, like, let's face it. I think it was a, a smart thing for them to do business-wise. Um, I think the 370Z was pretty, pretty solid as a platform. It just needed some you know, pretty, you need some attention paid to it in terms of the tune. I guess we'll yeah. see. It, um, needed to, it needed to be modernized and they did that. Uh, they gave it a bigger screen. They gave it a more modern interior. They gave it a better engine. Hopefully it's a little more efficient mm. in addition to being more powerful, hopefully. Right. Um, but this was what 2021's iteration of a Z should look, should look like, yeah. I think. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people in the comments wondering about this between a Supra and like, I think it's already cooler than the Supra because it offers a manual. And obviously everybody's like, oh, well, the Supra is just a rebadge BMW, so on and so forth. If you want to get into that, this is a pure Nissan, regardless of how old the platform is. It's not shared with anything or anyone. I think I think I don't think it is. No, I might, to, I might have to fact check. No. OK, well, I mean, it's the FM, right? So that would be they're just 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 infinity right yeah so yeah just infinity so it's not like a super separate brand yeah uh, i think it looks better than the supra 
does anyone pay attention to the super anymore? That's a good question. I don't uh, hear about let, it. Let's let's send that out to the audience. Does anybody pay attention? Does anyone to the care? Supra? Does anyone care? And would anybody um, put the Supra above this car just inherently? That's a good question. And and you know I don't want to hear the oh the Supra makes more power. Okay, yeah, fine. But how much grins? We're we're counting grins here. We're, we're counting grins. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, see, look at all the no. Look at that. A lot of no's. The no's seem to. Oh wow! 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 Yeah, a lot of no's. The no's have it. Um, so one of the other things uh, I, I I wanted to ask you, because I'm not sure if I'm reading the press release right, right? Um, okay. Hold on a second. Let me. Oh, <laughs> let me... Here's our, wait, the club music. Wait, hold on. Listen to club music for a second. Let's chill out. It's set. <laughs> Sun, Sunday morning, chill out. Um. So one of the things I read in the press release, automatic trans models get the drive modes, whereas manual do not get the drive modes. Yes. And, right? Yes. So so that means that they are packaging the manual cars already a little bit more aggressively, than, yes. uh, aggressive tune, and that's what you get. And I really kind of like that. It's like if you're going to buy the manual, like – you know, you're going to want the more aggressive tune anyway. So you don't need the sport and normal button. Is that the, what's happening? I think the implication is if you're getting the manual, you are not doing it by accident. You know exactly what you're signing up for. You know what you're getting. Right. Right. Um, the other thing though, the, the thing that Porsche used to say about why they, they, you know, they, um, they didn't offer the, let's say the, uh, what was it? The, their, their, their active diff, Mm. They didn't offer that with manual because the DSG and the active diff run off the same processor, right? So you can't have, you can't have one without the, you know, you can have one without the other, but you can't have the rear active diff without the processor that goes with the DSG. So there might be a technical challenge on the inside, right? So who knows? Might be. I, yeah. I doubt we're going to get a straight answer, but yeah, one exists. Yeah. So, but we, I guess we should talk about the automatic, uh, nine speed automatic. Um, and, uh, it has that automatic rev matching and the performance edition comes with launch control, both if you get the manual or the automatic, but you know, automatic's probably going to be quicker, I guess. I mean, probably it's just, it's one of those things now where, yeah, it's going to be quicker objectively, but again, you're going to get the manual. You're going to get the manual because you want it, not because you want to be quicker. Right. Right. Um, also, so we're talking about the, there's the performance package and the sport package. Sport is just the base and, and performance is uh, a little higher content level, bigger. So bigger, b bigger brakes with um, I think it comes with floating calipers all around in the, um, in the larger brake setup in the performance car. And I'm not sure whether you can get those, you know, as a, as an a la carte option on the base model, they haven't released a lot of that kind of buying information yet, but I guess we'll see. Um, I can tell yeah. you that the difference between the brakes, oh, I just wrote this, the brakes on the production model are four piston calipers up front, two pistons in the rear mm -hmm. on the Z proto, they were six piston uh, drilled, rotors right. from the GTR. Um, but obviously that's, overkill. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it is. <laughs> I mean, or that's going to be like, you know, the, the Nismo edition. Yeah. They're going to put that on the Nismo that. edition. That's exactly yeah. what's going to happen in, in like a year, maybe two years. They're going to be like, you remember all that stuff on the Z proto? Well, right. it's back. <laughs> exactly. And it's going to be $70,000. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I mean, you really want somewhere to go with this car, right? So you want, you can do that and then you charge like, 55 or 60 and now you're in vet category and now you're at 435 horsepower and you've got the better brakes and you've got the different suspension or whatever. Yeah. I, so I guess next, the next thing is up. We're looking at a floor right now. Yeah. We're looking at the floor. That's a good, good way to put it. Um, the other thing is, okay, what are the two, the two tire options? The sport gets the Yokohama's, the advans, right. And then mm. um, uh, the performance gets, Bridgestone Potenzas. <laughs> it sounds like, okay. I mean, they're fine. I mean, sure. they're fine. I, I wouldn't pick them um, over Michelin's, but I guess, okay, fine. That's yeah, cool. Sure. I mean, people, that's like one of the easiest things you can change immediately. Yeah. 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 Um, 
So I'm, I think I'm getting near the end of the stuff. Well, actually we haven't talked about the interior. Do you want to, let me yeah. pull up, let me pull up the interior. Let me just say one thing. I don't like to be the guy that complains, although we're all into cars. So we're all complaining assholes. So like, but I don't want to be that necessarily that guy. <laughs> but the thing that I loved about the original Z's interior that, that, that says to me like, Z when you sit down other than like the wooden the fake wooden steering wheel whatever that was made out of composite is the the gauge shrouds right and uh -huh. they got they kind of they they got rid of the deep you know the original Z had the deep gauge shrouds the 350 had like less deep and now the 370 was sort of you know not not really deep at all and this is just a TFT screen hold on you're talking about the driver for information cluster yeah well the just the the binnacle yeah let me see let me see ah uh, yeah i see <laughs> wow that's a trip yeah i remember when everyone's gauge clusters look like that right <laughs> and now and now it's this and now it's like just a regular thing and and what they they you know they i i i don't know i mean i it looks like they sort of they're the same attach points for things like you know Ventil ventilation and whatnot in the center stack and what and everything but they they put a larger they put the screen finally it doesn't look dated i don't know they did kind of nice job with the interior it's, it looks okay what, what did it look like up close it looks i i thought it looked cozy um i spent maybe a few seconds in it because there were a lot of people cycling through yeah i felt like it was an interior that will not get in your way as you're driving for a okay. sports car, I think it's very important to have an interior that doesn't distract from the actual act of driving, be that it like a stick up screen that is just pasted right there or, you know, weird buttons where you can't push anything. Um, so it stays out of the way and it is inoffensive. And that's Oops. the most I can say about it at this time. I will say <laughs> also right. they added a cup holder. Uh, that was something oh. that Nissan Nissan's rep was very excited to show me. OK, I well, that's nice. I don't, I don't go. remember. Yeah. So behind that first cup holder there, if you slide that little center console back, there's a second cup holder underneath it. And now your, uh, your passenger has a place to put their drink instead of just in their own lap. That's very nice. Um, yeah. I mean, ergonomics, you know, and I, I do, you know, I'm a sucker for the, for the aluminum brushed aluminum pedals and things like, um, they're also the performance car. I don't think Either of these have it, but they they're doing a thing where like the paddles come right out of the GTR, right? Oh, oh yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't have it, but but if you get the automatic, you get the GTR paddles. Um, there's also another cool thing that you found while you were there. Look at that. That's yeah. The, that's the rear uh, rear window. Yeah, that's at the base of the rear window. It's a little Easter egg. I thought that was really sweet. Is that etched into the glass? Uh, I think it might be. I didn't touch it because I didn't want to put a fingerprint on it. Well, it but it looks like, like so you yeah. see it, there's a dash there, right? So it's almost like 1969. Uh, and? To, yeah, it's like, well, it's it's a little bit morbid. It is sort of like like a, like a grave. It's like it's like yeah, a grave. It's like it when does. you buy a gravestone, but you don't know, you know, when the day is going to be. So you, there's just as a dash and it doesn't have. And then like you put the other date in later. Yeah. I don't know. That's a little I mean, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know, know what, what that, that dash is. I was sitting there looking the at it. I was like, what is that? Why? Yeah. 1969 on into the future to some indeterminate date. I and think you could write it in with Sharpie when it's over. Yes. <laughs> you fill exactly. it in. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so I just want. So let's go to you guys. I mean, I don't know what else. I think we've sort of hit a lot of stuff on here. Let me let me roll the video again, just so you can see it while we're talking. Um, there we go. Nope. Let me unmute it. There we go. Leave Chilling. that chill out. Leave leave that chill out music for later. So yeah, I don't know. I mean. Um, Wheels and tires. Okay. Yeah, we do have wheels and tires, right? So Sport Z, that's the base model, gets 18-inch wheels, um, regular aluminum alloy, uh, Yokohama Advan tires, 248, 45 R18s, all the way around, um, just, you know, uniform all the way around. The performance gets, uh, let's see, 255 40s in the front, and those are on... Those are on the real, the lightweight Rays 19 inch, right? So uh, they are, what did I say before? Bridgestone Potenzas. Mm. 
and they're 240, 255.40s in the front and 275.35s in the rear. So, um, yeah, not the widest, not the widest wheels. I, it's but, just waiting for people to, yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be a lively aftermarket scene. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear the exhaust, the exhaust systems that come out of it. I can't wait to see the wheels. I want to see yeah. some bumpers. Yeah, there's going to be all kinds of stuff. Um, sport exhaust, if you get the performance. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see how that sounds. Um, and then there was another thing I, I wanted to say. I can't remember uh, what it was. Um, one of you guys mentioned something that reminded me. So wait a minute. Let me go back up. Oh, um, yeah. So I think that I don't know this engine very well, right? I mean, so I don't know. I think you guys, there, there have been some minor issues and I, I know they're small turbos. But one of the things that they added was an oil cooler because I, as I remember, people I know who've had these had oil cooling issues uh, when the car was being used uh, in a very, uh, let's say, aggressive manner, like on the track. Um, Andy Parker, why is a sport exhaust not standard on a car like this? I I don't know. It's just one of those things where you go, uh, you buy the more expensive one rather than the less expensive one if if, if it's got it. It's just marketing. I agree. Like, why not just give it the whole thing? Yeah. Carbon fi yeah, carbon fiber drive shaft only with the manual, obviously. Uh, no, it's not obviously. Carbon fiber drive shaft, much like the GTR, um, comes with the manual. Um, let's see. Um, what else, you guys? got up there hey kristen can you see the uh yeah the, the chat up there yeah um is the gearbox in-house no Ooh, probably like not a, that's I a good not that's a good question so. i don't know uh here's something i should know who did the who did the last one was it eisen yeah i know uh. I, maybe you guys know was it eisen eisen did the uh the the uh, uh i or jacko yeah um Let's see what else, what else we got. I'm just thinking when the 370 came out, Obama was in the White House. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Well, when the 350 oh came out, I, that was 20 years ago, wasn't it? 2001. It came out as a 2002. Oh my Am god! Am I thinking of that right? Oh my god! That's crazy. I just got chills. That's nuts. So this platform started out a little bit different because I, as I remember, I don't want to get too technical because I'm not a technical expert, especially about this car. But like, I remember the thinking that I'm really kind of nerding out on the 350s front suspension. It was like this kind of interesting multi-link version of a, of a, um, uh, uh, let's see, it was, um, there were, it was a, um, God, I'm trying to, there was something, let me see if I can, did I, did I take any notes on this? Um, it was a very nerdy, front suspension you guys remember um what the deal was with that ah, i shouldn't have even brought it up because i just don't remember I, um, yeah but I it was a, it was a double wishbone but it had um the bottom was two links instead of uh instead of one instead of one uh in the bottom anyway i don't know we'll we'll, we'll learn more about what this one is because we didn't get to see i mean it's apparently like when they moved to this 370Z, they went to sort of a more generic uh, double wishbone. And I wonder what this has. And I think that it has more like what the 370Z has because it, it it allowed them to get the engine a little bit lower, I think, mm. in the 370Z than in the 350. Um, yeah, there, there are a bunch of technical details that we'll have to, you know, get one of our um, – tuner friends to, to talk a little more i think about. car bible should do a teardown those guys yeah. are very very well equipped for that if you guys that haven't read car bibles it is the best new site on car internet those guys are cooler than all of us combined like, oh no they doubt start talking about cars and culture and stuff i'm just like i'm so outclassed well it's so funny because yeah i want to see because chris rosales uh knows a ton about these and yeah. um and so car bible is going to do more and more content about this and so we'll we'll hear from him um, okay. Quickly name the differences between performance and sport editions. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Um, okay. So okay. let me see if I can just from, because okay. I don't have the yeah. thing in front of me. So your, your sport is your base. You don't have the LSD. You don't have the rear spoiler. You have the smaller 18 inch wheels. Um, what else? Let's see. Remember. Um, you get the smaller brakes. Mm, with mm -hmm. the with the fixed calipers 
Um, you get, um, yeah, two piston front and rear uh, in the in the sport in the base model. And it, it's not. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, just the smaller wheels and tires. You don't get the raise. Uh, wheels like you get in the in the 19s you get 18s um and uh let me see i think that's i think that's that's really it it. it's very negligible difference i want to say but but very specific things like if you you need yeah i mean like i don't know uh yeah open diff austin you're absolutely right so you need to get the performance to get the um to get the LSD. But here's the other thing that they didn't tell us whether you can get any of those things a la carte on the base model, which would be amazing if you could. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. Oh, uh, what happened to the weird door handles? I can answer oh, that question. Yeah. Yep. On the Z Proto, it was intent. It was intended to go around and be displayed in the auto show circuit. So they made this new door that was unlatched from a button on the B pillar uh, so presumably goons like us couldn't just go and open the door and, and sit in the prototype and mess it up. And uh, for the production version, they gave it an actual real door handle. Got it. That's interesting. I yeah. Did not, did not know that. Um, JC says sport is eight inch, eight inch screen performance is nine inch screen. That makes sense. Right. So they, yeah. they, they, they uh, decontented the interior a little bit. Of course they're going to do that, but I guess, um, Oh, they didn't say weight. They haven't said weight yet. I haven't seen any weight figures. Uh, I have not seen any carbon brake options. I'm going to assume that's going to come later and probably for the Nismo version. Yeah. And they, they what they also haven't done is they haven't talked about a, you know, the, I'll bet you they're saving this for SEMA. So see at the SEMA show uh, this November, I will, I'll bet you guys and hold me to it um, that they're going to introduce um their plan for nismo products and stuff for this car oh yeah they have to they have to just you know hit that z button while it's hot yeah exactly tony 30 32 52 pounds where are you getting that from is that is that from anywhere um anyway yeah who was it okay so so a lot of people are are gushing over this um my buddy johnny lieberman is not quite as positive about this Mm -hmm. um sort of just thinks the the mustang and the camaro are better value for you know better performance values um i don't know i don't know uh, I, I guess that's a that's a matter of i don't know that that's a matter of oh wait a minute sorry i, I you, you I, <laughs> yeah it's a, i was gonna say it's a matter of opinion but i did want to get to z i z's j i don't i don't know how to pronounce his name up there but uh you know he said uh need a sema 450z there are going to be a ton of SEMA builds of this oh, car. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. They probably have already started, right? I mean, obviously, like, and, you know, what non-disclosure agreements being what they are, they probably, um, you know, just uh, 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 there's a lot of garages full of cars that are going to be seen in uh, November. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I want to see a, a, a 400, 450Z. Give me, give me a 500Z. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I think we can wrap it up. I mean, you guys have any last minute questions about this? I mean, we really don't know a ton. We we Mm-mm. you know, Kristen went to see it last night in Brooklyn. Um, we have the press releases, we have some specs and stuff, but um, let me know. see, let me see if there is anything. Um, it's still got a rear hatch design, and apparently it has been refined uh, so that there is better chest body rigidity because when you have a oh, hatch, yeah. it like you know messes up with the structural rigidity of the body. So the flack was very, very determined to tell me that the hatch <laughs> is rigid. And I was like, thank you, sir. I didn't think it was not going to be. Right. Um, also, I think the actual frame is is thinner for better visibility, I think. Don't quote me. It was kind okay. of loud in there. But yeah. I do know that it is lighter and more rigid than in the previous car. Right, right, right. Uh, Toolkit or spare wheel? Did not see a spare wheel. <laughs> we don't know. Um, also, how heavy is it? Yeah, we don't have the weight yet. Um, oh, is it... Uh, is it uh, uh, what kind of fuel does it take? I'm gonna guess it takes premium. I think it takes premium. Yeah, I think I think the the uh, the Infinity does. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, that's just a guess, but I'm pretty sure. It, I don't know. What's the run of, of that now? So in America, it's, what is it? I mean, 90, 91, but in like, Cal- I don't, in California. Out West, out West. That was the biggest shock to me when I moved to LA. I was like, y'all I'm 93 out here and I have to pump it. <laughs> and and it's more expensive. It right. <laughs> Um, do we think Toyota will respond by putting the M2 manual in the Supra as an option? I do not think they will do that. Absolutely not. They're done no. with that car. I, yeah, I think they, they're not going to spend another dime on that thing. Unless, I mean, listen, is it selling more than they expected? Probably not. I think is it, is, is it meeting expectations? It might be meeting expectations because they're notoriously, um, you know, when they set their goals, they, they set them attainable and then they push from there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they're, they're going to do, you're not going to see a, um, a manual super unless, uh, the pigs only fly. manual super that I know of races in formula drift. That's the only one I've seen. Right. Uh, Blake shame about use the new Z using the lame. Uh, Oh yeah. VLSD from the 370 Z and 350 Z clutch pack um i i don't know we don't they didn't say anything about that other than that it's a clutch based lsd right i mean that, that's the only thing that they mentioned so it's probably the same the one cool thing last night was um hiroshi Chimura was there uh showing off the car he had cool blue shoes on you could tell that dude was so stoked like he was yeah. like big smile he was so happy like taking photos of the car taking photos of people taking photos of the car you know, you could really tell this was a car that he wanted to build and he finally got to do it and it's out and everyone really loves it. I was so happy for that guy. Good nice. for that guy. Good for him. He's, he's, you know what, like you got to have a champion like that inside the company. If you're going to get cars yeah. that people w- love to drive. And you got to have it. a guy who believes in the cause. If you like, you, you can tell when someone doesn't believe in the cause, the cars come out like garbage. Yeah. Um, Clutch-based LSD is not the same as VLSD. Uh, no, I, VLSD. Um, this is where I, I never. Yeah, I, cl- it's not a clutch pack. Mm, shit, it's uh, uh, actuated. I think they use actuators. This, this is right? beyond my realm of. Yeah, but I think it's actuators. <laughs> I don't think they use. It's viscous. Sorry, it's, it's a. It's a. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Liquid, fluid based. Anyway. Uh, someone um, asked about price. We don't have that yet, but it's circulating that it'll be starting at forty thousand dollars. Yeah, starting at forty thousand. Well, we are up against we are up against my uh, my knowledge of this car. And uh, Kristen, thank you so much for uh, for being on. You guys, uh, don't forget we're going to be doing this a lot. So stop by next time. Watch the watch this space for more of these things. Um, and uh, Kristen will be back, and uh, I will be back as well. Cool. Good to see you. We'll talk later. Bye. See you guys. Oh, does it have a flex fuel sensor? I don't know. Um. I don't think so. <laughs> <All right>. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.